fearless pioneer. Yo, what's going on guys? EJ here, bringing another Lord of the Rings Rise to War video. Today guys, we're going to be going over another formation video and we're going to be doing a full Dwarven formation build today. I think I've come up with an awesome one. There's not a lot of Dwarves to pick from, but I think this is the best combination. I like this combination of the Commanders the most. Um, so we're going to go over and have a look at all the Commander stat skills. Um, it'll be kind of the same kind of gear, but a little bit different. Um, it's hard to stretch out gear for different kinds of Commanders and that, but it seems to work really good with my Dwarves. And then we'll get into a few PvP battles and break down the results and everything and see if we can get some good or bad results. Alright, so let's start off by having a look at the formation. So, our formation is going to consist of Dane, Gimli, Falgin, and Barlin. So this is my favourite four out of the Dwarves to pick for the perfect combination. So, starting off, we can just see the full stats. So we have... A supply of 7,240 with the commander levels that we have. Two at level 41 and two at 40. 105.9k total attack. 106 speed with 134,790 siege. Now, um, for reference, I always use one tier 4 unit. Then all the rest tier 3 units to try and make the battle seem as more realistic as possible. When in a, an actual season, you're not just going to have all tier 4 units. So... You can see that um, my Dane is very strong. It's going to have a Zenith level 10. So he's like super strong. Then we have at capped level 10, we have Gimli. And then we have Falgin at respect level 5 and Barlin at respect level 6. Which I'll definitely be leveling those guys up a lot more. I just can't do that in the PBE. But the reason I picked these guys over like Thorin and stuff, you will see when it comes to their skills. So let's start off first with Dane. So, Dane, we have absolute fantastic gear here. So, you want to be strengthening up his commander attack damage over here at 171. Also, has 135 defense. It's going to work really good with this build that we're going to be doing. So, we have a damage of 40 to 59 and HP of 7,500 and a command of 156. We have all of our gear, which has the set of Warcry, which for the first three rounds will increase the formation's damage dealt by 20%. And all of this gear, as you can see, is going to be increasing commander attack plus a lot. 48 there, plus 48 there, plus 12 here. Now, I really want to get one of those Plunteers, um, which are really good, like the green ball. Um, they also give plus 42 commander attack. If I can get one of them, it would be fantastic. I also do plan on getting Dane's special equipment as well, the Relic, but I won't be able to do that until I get into a season. And as I'll announce, I will be getting into a season very soon. I'm going to be going into a Tactics Evolve RP server in about four days or so. So yeah, I'm going to be kicking off my season, so it's going to be really good. Now with skilling, I always max out Iron Foot because not only does it do really good physical damage, it also has a chance to inflict stun. But the big thing as well, it stops the target from recovering HP. Durin's Blood speaks for itself, does huge physical amounts of damage. Also at level 10, it gives a buff of commander attack plus 5 as well. And then King Under the Mountain has a chance to deal a certain amount of physical damage to 3 enemy formations, which is really good. Alright, so we're talking about the Iron Warriors. Now the Iron Warriors are a small unit, so they're going to do really good against like large units for example. And not do as good against medium units. So these guys have an attack damage of 30 to 34. With an attack rating of 59. Initiative kind of a little bit lower side on 5. HP 86 is great with defense of 103. And siege and march speed not too much to be taken into consideration there. We have full armor which physical damage received minus 15% is really good. And battle is bane damage to melee units plus 10%. Which is really good. Okay, moving on next, we have our Gimli at respect level 10. So we have the same kind of concept here. We have all kind of gear that's going to buff up commander attack um, stats, as you can see on all of these kinds of gear. Um, he has not as high damage, but 28 to 43. A more bigger range, but not a higher base to start off with. A bit lower HP than Dane. Command, definitely lower. He does have really good defense, still back up at 100, 175 attack. Now his skill, I always had just have a little bit of um, in here because I always max out my Durin's Blood first, but also Lord of the Glittering Caves because it does have some really good 
things such as physical damage to two enemy formations, but the healing effects received by targets are minus 50%, so you're doing even more healing uh, debuffs to the enemy, like how Dane is doing, for example. Now, I'm using Ram Riders on him, which are a medium-sized unit, so I'm doing a bit of a mixing sometimes. I'll use all of the size, different sizes, but I like having the Ram Riders in there because they are a medium size. So if you do bump into a couple of small units on the other side, you're going to get a little bit more advantage again. So we have a damage of 26 to 33, attack strength of 58, good initiative of 12, HP 86 and defense of 52. So still pretty good even though for a more of an attacking type of unit. But of course, we know they do have the three um, sets down here. So they have mounted damage received minus 2%. Uh, normal attack reduced the target's defense stat by 8 for one round. And they have fireproof of burn damage received minus 15%, which is really good. Next, we have his Foul Gin. Now, um, as you can see, I have gear which is going to increase his commander attack strength as much as possible. Obviously, um, I tried to do my best here to make a full set, so I've got Might here, which physical damage dealt by the commander is increased by plus 10%. Now, the reason that I really like to pick Falgin, um, he doesn't have the highest damages and buffs and stuff, and his attack strength and defense aren't the highest, but this skill here, Threaten Guards, is really good, because damage taken by three allied war formations for the first six hits is reduced by 30%, so a huge damage reduction there. For all of um, the dwarf formations, so that's why we're doing a full dwarf build here. That will increase to eight instances, and at level ten, the effect is modified by the commander's defense stats. So even at fifty, um, is going to give it a little bit of an extra buff there. Now we are using guardians here, which are a small unit once again. Their damage range of seven to twenty is kind of low, but they're more on the defensive side because they do have good HP and defense of forty-five HP and sixty-seven defense. And yeah, and of course, the other points I have is Endurance Blood because it just does so much physical damage, it's unreal. Our last one we're going to use is Barlin. Now, um, as you can see, I don't have the absolute best gear here, but I do have a full set of Sharp Blade. So Sharp Blade is going to help increase the formation's attack plus 20 during combat. I am also got about 82 attacks, so it's not the highest, but it's still pretty good. But 95 defense is really good there. Damage HP and command is kind of mid for Barlin, but you're more using him for his skills because, of course, he has Duran's Blood again, which does huge physical amount of damage. But Warrior of the Lonely Mountain is fantastic because it increases the attack and defense of three allied formations plus seven. So you're getting a buff to three of those formations. And you also get burn damage reduction of 5% and addition of 5% at level 10 for focus damage which you will see a lot on the evil side as well, so that's a really good one to use. Um, now, with the skills with the Guardians, because we missed over them before, we have Shielding, which has a 50% chance to reduce physical damage by 10%. Then we have Laceration, which normal attacks inflict an additional 20% physical damage and is continuous for one round. And then, of course, we have Heatproof, which has the burn damage reduction of 15%. So, as you can see, we're going to be doing a lot of good buffs with Barlin, and with Falgin. So these guys are more in here, even though they do have some good, a little bit of physical damage commander damage themselves, they're more there to help buff and make the whole formation a formidable force. So yeah, now that we know the formation, we've seen how it's all built and everything, what else is there to do but to go get into some PvP battles and test this out? So let's go do that, shall we? Alrighty, I've been waiting for ages, like probably like two hours for an army to turn up to fight. So I ain't going to be picky. I can see that this guy um, is probably using evil units. He's um, got Moomakill and Troll. So it's going to be very interesting. So um, we at least know he's at least got one Moomakill army and at least one Troll army in this formation. I'm guessing it's probably going to be evil commanders. So yeah, we're not going to be picky. We're just going to go straight in and see how my Dwarven formation goes. Just going across the water right now. and We'll see how we do here. Yeah, it's going to be quite interesting. Hopefully we can get into a big battle here. And we get some interesting results. Alright, Dane, the sailing across. There we go. So it's a draw. Okay. So let's have a look. Alright. Pretty, pretty even interesting battle. Let's have a look. 
Um, 2,600, 2,700. Okay, so it's very even. Let's have a look here. Alright. Oh, wow. Okay, so it was actually really good results, really. Full stack of, um, so it's a full stack of Muma kill. Very interesting. Dane doing 121,000 damage there. Um, we've got Gimli with these guys doing 65,000. So, I think the first changes, just from this battle so far that I see, even though it was against all tier 4s, I think, um, instead of running the Guardians, I'm just going to run all Ram Riders. Um, so I'm going to make that change for the next battle. Um, not much more I can really say besides the damage-wise. So we did 175,000 Commander damage, 80,000 Soldier damage. Damage received 212,000. Damage received 364,000. Um, because they were using such huge amount. I didn't think it was actually going to be a full stack. We can see the breakdowns. Dane doing 98,000 damage. Iron Knights doing 23,000. Ram Riders, 23. We've got 14 there, sorry. With 50,000 commander damage. Falgin and Barley not doing much commander damage. That's normal. Um, so, yeah. I can kind of see what's happening there. It looks pretty good. I think we're going to make the changes with these. Maybe even I could even use the axe throwers or something. And test out the axe throwers as well. Um, seeming we're bumping into all melee and stuff there. But we'll bring them back. Not a bad result to be honest against a full Mumikill stack. So I think that was actually quite a very good result. And yeah, I'm probably going to muck around with maybe some troops... And a couple of things and bring them back and we'll see if we can battle something else. Maybe we can verse the same army again with some different troops and that and see how we do. Also, if we take a little bit of a look at his gear, that's quite decent. Full purple with war cry. So not bad there. Full um of a sharp blade set for on Sunid. Witch King has got a full purple of the one which increases the might. And let's have a look and see what happens with, yeah, the shadow with thick armor. Okay, so not bad. The Muma Kill is so strong and tough, though. That's the only problem. Um, if he didn't have Muma Kill and that was more of like, if he had one Muma Kill and the rest tier 3s, I think I would have mopped the floor with him, to be honest. Um, but I think overall still that's a fantastic result. Like, basically... I lost by like millimeters in um, the amount of um, troops in my supply that I lost. And I was using tier 3 units. So yeah, maybe we'll throw in some ranged units in that now. Some axe throwers in that and test it out and see how we go. We'll mix it up a little bit. Rightio guys, so we've got um, a friend helping out to do some battles with me. Absolute legend. Uh, using his evil account. So we're going to see what happens here. So it's a draw. That's nice to see. Okay, he's got undying. That's good to see. Okay, it's a pretty nice even battle. Looks like I lost it a little bit, but let's have a look at the levels and everything, shall we? Wow, this was a really good battle. Okay, this is going to have some good data to it. Okay, really nice. Let's have a look here, shall we? So, first off, let me just quickly take my army back because my troops will be dead. But this is going to be... Um, this is going to be really good. So, let's have a look here. So, let's go into here. I think this is going to get some good data off this battle. Really good battle. Okay, so he was using three tier 4 units. We get to have a look and see how the change is made with using the axe throwers now. Dane doing unbelievably good damage at 173,000. That's really good. We'll go into the breakdown and everything of that. I just want to have a look at his gear real quick. Okay, so all purple sharp blade. All purple sharp blade. Okay, all gold. Not a full set, but really good gear there. 225. Okay, really good. And Scar Helm, really good. Okay, so um, these are some of the best evil commanders on the actual in the actual game. I'm actually not even joking. Undying, Lurch, Shadow, and Scar Helm. So this is a really good battle um, and really good data here. I really like this. This is going to break down really nice. So he's using Tier 3 Trolls there, then 3 Tier 4 units. Um, I did technically lose, but only by a tiny bit. I think um, this is really good. I only have... He had a couple of... The levels were kind of balanced. Like it was 41-41. I had 40-40. He had all 41s. But I want to have a look at the breakdown. So um, I actually did more damage of 334,000 damage to 260,000 received. 
If we go to the breakdown, we can see that Dane did 142,000 commander damage, 31,000 from the tier 4 unit Iron Warriors. Gimli did 58,000 damage and 22,000 from the axe throwers. Um, and then, yeah, small amounts, so not a lot of amount of damage, but these guys are more about the support there. It's more about Dane doing the amount of damage. So, yeah, that, that's looking quite nice. Um, I'm really happy with those results. I think um, we did fantastically there. And, like, a really good gear, really good army, like, really good commanders. And I think that if we make... We don't need to make any more changes. I think he's going to send another army in a moment without tier, as many tier 4 units and see how we go. So, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting. But very happy with those results, guys. Right here, guys, so we've got one last battle here before we wrap up today's video. We had some really good results last time. We're going to see what happens here. So, okay, got Witch King now. So this is going to be interesting. Another very evenly good battle. I think I might have got a little bit more on the winning side this time. Let's have a look. It looks very nice. Oh, he's got 7,300. So he must have a few higher levels here. Let's have a look. Quite nice. Pretty good battle here. 700. So actually... He had a little bit more HP than me, so he's using all tier 3 units, all level 42. He's got some really good evil commanders here. Okay, that's a really good Witch King. Uh, all sharp blade with the actual Relic Helmet as well. Then we have Sestaro, which does fantastic amounts of focus damage and has his Relic as well. We have level 42 as well, Saruman. Looking really good, full gold um, there as well. So yeah. Reversing some really good strong armies here and getting some quite very nice results. Um, so the axe rolls are very nice. They seem to be bumping in a lot and doing a lot of damage to the melee units. Uh, if we break it down, we actually did quite well. 231,000 to 261,000. He actually did out commander damage me, which is quite nice. Um, Sold damage, he did about 10,000 more. But yeah, no, nah, another really good even battle. Um, I still, he's got a couple more levels on me as well, so he has a little bit more supply in his army, but overall, I think, um, that's a fantastic result, guys, I think we did really good there, I'm very happy with those results, I feel if I could definitely level these guys up a bit, my Falgin and Balin, and get their respects up, which I can't do with a PvE at the moment, um, and, like, have a little bit better gear from that, it'll be a lot better, but overall, um, you're going to be getting draws even against some of the best, strongest commanders with really good gear in the game. Like, yeah, I think he had gold all around. Like, yes, my Dane and that, of course, has some nice gear and things. I don't have any relics. Um, but, yeah, um, I've got just purples and stuff here. So, yeah, I think that's a fantastic result. But, yeah, guys, um, I'm going to wrap up the video there. Um, I hope this video helped you guys out um, and... and gives you an understanding of where you want to go if you want to go in a dwarven direction i think this is a fantastic build guys um you're not going to maybe get the win every single time but like if you bump into this i'm versing some quite very strong armies here in formations so as you can see i'm holding my own against fantastic formations here guys but anyway guys we're going to wrap up the video so until next time peace out ej's out and i'll catch you guys later see us <laughs> Thousands of the EJU.